Are you looking for fun and easy watercolor painting ideas? Why not try painting birds? Today in my bird painting series, I'll show you how to draw and paint this brilliant yellow goldfinch. For this third video in my little bird series here, I'm going to be painting the top right corner with a goldfinch. And so to protect my previous paintings, I'm just gonna cover them up with some paper towel and then I'll just put my palette over the top of that. All right, so I'm gonna start by drawing on the bird first. This one is facing the left, and so I'm just gonna make some marks for where I want the beak to go and where I want the tail to go. It's always a good idea to just plan out the size and spacing with light pe pencil marks before jumping in with the paint. Goldfinches are one of my very favorite birds. I grew up in the Midwest and we had a garden with sunflowers and you'd all see the goldfinches out there just feasting on the sunflower seeds. They're such beautiful birds. So for this one, we're kind of getting a, almost a top-down view of the bird, looking at the beautiful feathers on his back. And so we'll make sure we include all those black and white markings that are so distinctive to a goldfinch. There's almost this yellow cape shape that comes around. So I'm going to draw that in. like that and then there's almost this little shoulder where the wing curves upward and reaches the neck. So this area will be black and white and I'm just going to draw in the shapes of the white feathers. Remember with watercolor you want to plan ahead for where your whites are going to go because we'll need to either use masking fluid or paint it in with gouache or just paint around it to preserve the white of the paper. And then this little leg and the underside of the bird. And my tail feathers might end up going off the paper a little bit. Oops, well, that's all right. So we'll just draw the little claws curving around a branch. More like that. We'll make the branch come up beyond the bird's back. Okay, so we're almost done with our sketch. Just need to add the eye. And there's a little black stripe or marking on the top of the bird's head that we'll paint in later. And then let's add those white markings so that we can be sure to avoid those when we come in with paint. Now, some of these white markings won't truly be white because this side of the bird is in shadow. And so looking at my reference photo, you can see it actually looks kind of bluish. But we will start by painting the lightest areas in first. That will prevent any dark black or darker colors from bleeding into those light areas. Oh, 
almost done with our sketch. I'm just going to block in a couple of white tail feathers here. And then I think we're ready to paint. Okay, so I'm going to use Holbein Lemon Yellow, that's this color right here on my palette, for the yellow portion of the bird. I need to spray my palette to activate the paint. And I'm going to use Ultramarine for those white areas that are in shadow. And then for the black areas, I'm going to use a mixture of indigo, that's this color here. And then on my palette down here where you can't really see it, I have Burnt Umber, so I'm going to spray that. And I can make a really nice black when I mix indigo and Burnt Umber. And then for the beak, which is an orange color, I'm going to use my Winsor Newton Transparent Orange, which is right here on my palette. Okay, so that's what we'll start with. <clears throat> I'm going to go in with the bright yellow first. So just going to dab my paint, activate it, mix it around on my palette a little bit. And I'm going to start with the most intense yellow possible. And just paint it in. Now as I come over to the right side of the bird, it's going to get lighter because that's where there's some sunlight on our bird. So I'm just watering it down dabbing on my paper towel to remove any excess water and going very light on the right side. And that was pretty quick, <laughs> okay. The underside of the belly is also yellow. It is in shadow, so we'll need to glaze over it with another layer later. But for now, let's just paint the yellow in. Rinsing my brush. And then I'm gonna remove a little bit of the paint here in the top of the head, because it just got a little too dark. So to do that, I'm call, it's called lifting. I'm just wetting my brush, making sure it's clean and damp. It's called a thirsty brush. And just lifting the paint out while it's still wet. Okay, the next portion I'm going to paint in is going to be uh, the underside of the belly here and the the white highlights in the wing, which are actually in shadow, and so I'm going to use ultramarine for that because they're not truly white. Painting these in too will also help us if we start to lose our pencil markings just to see where those highlights are. And the leg is also that bluish tint. Now in the shadow areas of the bird's head, while the paint is still slightly wet, I am going to actually drop in some indigo to create a shadow and it's going to look kind of greenish. And that's okay because it's going to reflect the environment that this bird is in, surrounded by greenery. But I'm doing it while it's wet because I want it to disperse with the wet paint and just mix and look really soft. If you want to neutralize that green a little bit, you can introduce some brown and that will help calm down the green color. 
you feel like it's a little too green. I'm putting some brown here on the curve of the wing, which is in shadow. And already you can see our bird is starting to look three-dimensional. And then let's add a shadow layer to this yellow belly. Just going to darken this up. and make this shadow more intense. All right, let's grab a little of the transparent orange and paint in a first layer on the foot. I'm using my size 8 Princeton Neptune round brush. This is kind of my go-to brush for just about anything and everything. You can see it gets really tiny details, but you can also use it for broader washes. So it's a really versatile brush. Let's bring that orange into the beak. And then while all of this is drying, we'll start to work on the details in the wings. Now I'm switching to a slightly smaller brush. This is my size two, a Skoda brush, also a round brush. And with this brush, I'm gonna take that indigo and burnt umber and mix up black. And then I'm gonna start drawing in or painting in a little branch here that our bird is sitting on. Then just enough information so it looks like our bird isn't floating. It is actually solidly perched on something. And just painting in a shadow side on that branch. All right, with that same black, I'm gonna paint the top of the head with this black marking. It's just a little stripe. And then we can go ahead and fill in the eye too while we're there. Have to be pretty careful with these little details, just do your best to stay in your lines. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt umber and darken the beak because it is in shadow. Okay, let's move on to the wings. I realized I need some ultramarine for this white area here. And I'm just gonna paint in some teeny tiny little feather details on the white sides over here and on the tail feathers. And then I'm gonna go in Let's darken this up too while we're there. And 
Okay, I'm gonna go in with that black we mixed up. I'm gonna actually mix up a little more just so I don't run out of paint halfway through. And let's paint the black wings. For something like this, you just need a steady hand and a small brush, <laughs> that helps. I find I have to lean my hand on something, otherwise it can be difficult to stay in the lines. I'm just looking at my reference photo, making sure I'm getting the shapes correct. Grabbing more paint as needed. And I'm making sure my edges on those black shapes are not hard. They do look feathery, so I'm using the very tip of the brush to kind of pull the paint into the white just a little bit so it looks feathery, feathery textured. And carefully avoiding that teeny little streak right there of white. It's really starting to look like a goldfinch. Pretty exciting. Let's continue filling in this space with black. I could have just used lamp, lamp black or some sort of black watercolor paint for this, but I actually really like the look of these two colors mixed together. Just my preference, but of course you can use black too. That probably what takes the longest is just avoiding all of these little white details. And once you've got the black in, you can just see how you'll probably have to go darker with the white just because it is in shadow. Looks still a little too bright at this point, even though we did paint in it with, paint it in with ultramarine first. Just a couple more little details here in the wings, and then we can add some background effects. For these little whimsical birds, I like to do some spatter effect. All right, let's paint the tail in. I need a little more water to loosen up my paint some more. I'm just painting in those black lines. And I think that's good. All right, let me darken this shadow on the branch. Rinse my brush. And grab a little more ultramarine. And let's go darker in the shadow. If you decide to do that right after you've painted the black, make sure the black is dry enough that it's not gonna just immediately bleed into your white highlights. Yeah, that's better. 
All right, so let's add some fun little background details. I'm just going to take some undersea green and paint some little suggestions of leaves. Slightly watered down. Couple little splatters, maybe. And then with another color, let's do the orange. Just gonna add a little bit of spatter right above the bird here and below the bird. And let's zoom in so you can see the glare is a little bit bad right now. If I tilt it slightly, you can see it better. And there's our finished goldfinch.